We serve brokers and other financial institutions with solutions um, in, in the form of trading platforms. We serve exchanges with exchange solutions, matching engines and so on. And we also then serve the market need for real-time data supplies. What attracted you to become CEO of Dev Experts? The opportunity space we're in, specifically capital markets and, and what we do in terms of providing best in class uh, market needed technology solutions for the capital markets industry. Uh, that's a really exciting growth area with a lot of change and innovation. Um, it's also an area that demands deep insight and competence um, in terms of the solutions you need to deliver in, the, in that space. In addition to that, the nature of the clients, you know, it's, a, it's, it's exciting. Their business is also exciting at the present time. And that trusted relationship they need to build with us um, is also an important part of how, what, the way I like to do business um, as well. What is your core mission? connect people to financial market opportunities um, by providing those best in class market leading um, technology solutions for that capital markets industry. Now, there's a lot to unpack in that. But more personally, I think it's really about continuing on our current growth trajectory of consistent growth. And um, that's something that's really important to me as well. That industry insight, that depth of knowledge is is, is, is vital to that as well. So I think the, the values we espouse as a company in that regard is our you know, integrity and trust, deep um, insight and working in partnership um, closely in partnership with our clients. And for me, that uh, um, aligns very uh, well with my own personal interests uh, and values, which are very much around uh, in integrity, deal business integrity, dealing with integrity at all times. In innovation, I like to be at the cutting edge of things and we're very much positioned uh, um, for that in terms of our own capability, but also the manner in which we work with customers um, and also that element that, you know, deep trust that is required because of the nature of the business we're in and the fact that it, it is very much a people business as well. So people really matter in this. They matter to our, our clients who are large brokers with their own teams and um, with their own client base, large client bases, and they matter to our own company as well in terms of the people we have to. How is Dev Experts positioned in the software market? We're very strongly positioned in the software market, um, as very strongly in particular in the fintech space as well. We have, you know, at a very practical level, um, we um, see a lot of changes, significant changes in the marketplace, um, and we're evolving our offerings to address those changes that we see. So we, with the kind of changes we're seeing out there in the marketplace, Places, you know, customers are looking for um, a variety of assets to be tradable to, to be tradable on their platforms. They're looking for a lot of different types of devices to be for, um, to enable their customers to um, trade those those assets. Uh, they're looking for intuitive charting capabilities. They're looking for lots of trading features. And um, so these kind of things are things that we um, are well familiar with developing from a software uh, development point of view. The complexity of the space we deal. Lynn, is, is an important thing to understand here in that um, you know, we, we've delivered solutions into, into crypto and other challenging areas that um, have huge demands on the software skills and huge demands on the algorithmic skills that go behind that as well. So our positioning in the, in the software space is very much targeted towards capital market space, but builds on that, uh, that ability to address complex situations where uh, the volumes can be huge, the real-time aspect of it is incredible, and there can be volatility in how these systems are being used as well. So we're well positioned uh, with deep competence in, in respect of that. What new technologies are you leveraging? There's a huge amount of change as well. Well, there with with AI and blockchain uh, um, coming into play. Firstly, on the let me just deal first of all on the crypto side of things because that's where you know a lot of the blockchain um, technology has been applied as well. We have um, a strong breadth of offerings in um, in crypto space as part of our multi asset strategy. So we are multi asset right across the board, uh, and crypto is just one more uh, set of assets there. But I think one of the key things to to um, highlight coming out of that is the fact that. Um, these solutions are technically complex. Um, again, blockchain technology, it's been around a long time. It's all about how you apply it. Um, and applying it is actually a challenging thing to do. So the technical complexity really evidences our technology know-how and capabilities in terms of supplying that. And, you know, we have a cryptocurrency trading platform that... Uh, um, uh, that has been integrated into about 20 cryptocurrency exchanges already. And we've delivered solutions into some of the top crypto players uh, that are out there in the marketplace. So that's one aspect is just the 
technical complexity. The other thing that's really exciting actually about crypto is that to date it's been characterized a little bit by um, speculating retail investors taking a chance with it. So there's been a little bit of a wild west um, approach to uh, how it's been delivered in the past. But regulators now begin to pay much closer attention to crypto. Um, so crypto cap platforms and solutions are coming into scope for more traditional institutional players. Um, and that's where we're really well positioned to, to help those um, uh, institutional players to, to adapt into this innovative new cycle of potentially offering uh, crypto as part of their offerings. Somewhat to the same extent, you know, AI is a very interesting space as well. We're all about the kind of the judicious and pragmatic use of AI, right? So, you know, uh, there's certainly a hype curve around it. Um, we, we all know what's happening in terms of the, the tech stocks and where the value is at the present time. So there's a, there's a huge investment and in infrastructural investment uh, behind AI at the present time. For us, it's about then the judicial choice of what needs to be delivered with AI and where AI can play a role. Um, it's not the be all solution for everything that's out there. So we're looking at the best way of utilizing uh, AI in a helpful way for our clients. Um, and we're packaging that AI with other innovations for our end users. A great example, actually, is our Devexa offering. Um, and this is a basically a, a, an AI assistant that um, supports um, our clients and their customers, their trading users in how they get about their job. So it supports things like targeted communication, um, personalized news feeds. So the targeted communication means that, you know, a, a broker can actually, um, you know, target his user base with, with more relevant information, more relevant options, more relevant choices more re relevant in investment uh, possibilities uh, through targeted communication, uh, whereas the personalized news is about then delivering um, news that actually matters to that particular individual trader. Uh, it also then helps with that uh, aspect of, uh, you know, AI supporting the human interaction and having uh, access to AI powered um, support as well as human to human uh, support as well. And also helps hugely with the convenience that's offered out to the end user in terms of integrated trading features features that uh, allow users to, to trade directly from, from chats and other omni-channel uh, approaches that they might uh, take. What's critical from our point of view is that we, we've, we have the knowledge and insight to do the um, to, to, to deliver in terms of uh, blockchain and crypto technology and AI technology, but we're delivering it in a manner that is well informed by our deep experiences in, in the marketplace and our engagement with clients as well. Um, and that's a really, really important aspect of it because we're able to then pick the parts that, that will deliver the biggest bang for, for the buck for our customers. What are the challenges of the financial software industry? That continuing need to, to innovate um, um, in a very, very complex environment. Uh, there's new regulations uh, coming in. There's globalizing the, 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 the offerings, bringing them internationally, and uh, many brokers looking at expanding beyond their traditional domains. There's dealing with um, the requirements from a very, very wide variety of players out there. So from uh, new startup brokers right through to um, significantly well-established um, uh, institutional traders that are around a long time and looking to, um, you know, looking to transform their systems, but not break what's working for them as well. Um, and a common element to all of those um, uh, kind of problems and challenges that we see ahead of us is having that software development capability that is imbued with uh, an in-depth understanding of the industry and also deep experience of having delivered these platforms before. Another challenge they face in particular is, is time to market. The pace of innovation is, is quite dramatic. And what we offer in that regard is, you know, an ability to actually get to market quicker with a solution. In many cases, customers might be considering, you know, a, a new innovation in, in terms of their, their platforms or their offerings, but it's they're looking at several years to get to a point where they can deliver that. We can short cycle that time frame uh, by getting them uh, to market based on the fact that our product range uh, has, has a blend of, of products and services in it. And that blend can actually get uh, customers to market much quicker. What products are you working on? We're continuously innovating in our product range. Uh, so, for example, um, adding um, AI into our systems through the Defexa uh, product, that's a growth area for, the pre for us at the present time. And it's an enhancement of our existing uh, trading platform solutions. Uh, another space for us um, is adding more and more charting capability into our trading platforms uh, so that um, you know, customers have that um, options in terms of how they can assess their, their own investment strategies. Um, we have always been multi-asset, but we will continue to expand that multi-asset 
transit element of our systems as well so that um you know any any type of um uh, tradable asset will be available um or, or can be supported on a on one or other of our platforms as well. Um, we've also also been uh, multi-channel. So whether that's you know a mobile device or a web-based um, terminal, uh, that's uh, key for us as well. In terms of the longer term picture, it's very important for us because of that trust-based relationship that we have with our clients and the fact that you know we're positioned as a as a professional services partner rather than any kind of outsourcing vendor. Uh, it's very important for us that we we don't compete with our clients, uh, but at the same time we are keen to offer as much of the whole value chain um, that we can offer in terms of our technology solutions. So we're continuously looking at other parts of the overall trading value chain that we can um, bring to the table and uh, add value in and enable a uh, quicker turnaround for our, for our customers in that regard as well. How do you stay secure? Probably useful to note here that uh, we announced relatively recently some, you know, a fairly unique record in that, um, you know, we we have a, an exchange solution that's been up and running for with um, one hundred percent uptime or zero percent down downtime for over a year in, in one part of the world and experiencing huge volumes and huge demands. Right. So um, again, it's important to understand the the, the technical technological sophistication of these systems, the demands that they play in it. Uh, but we have many years of building those reliable and stable platforms we, we focus very strongly on having from the from the ground up ha on having a robust and uh, secure infrastructure right from the, the the design phase all the way through so i guess the ten thousand foot view is that there's a you know in the systems we build there's a multitude of parts that run it at a huge scale and um, with real-time requirements and volatility because they can uh, reach huge peaks at certain times as well the only way to do that is is start by uh, first of all from the design Design, design it from the ground up to have that flexibility. You know, we design it from the outset such that we can add instruments um, a, a, as we go along, but also then design it from the outset such that it has uh, the robustness built in and then test then test again and test again. You know, it's typical that for each release of our platform, it'll go to well in excess of 20,000 automated tests. So that kind of um, uh, uh, testing of the approach coupled with, um, you know, our deep expertise in, in, in high performance algorithms uh, really supports that robustness. On the security side of things, we know that we're in a space that, you know, information security is really important to all of our clients. Um, it's, it's a, it, they're, they're regulated entities and they, they require to have strong uh, support in this area. So, you know, we have a very, very strong security posture ourselves in that regard. Uh, it's built in from the ground up with a secure engineering approach to how we develop uh, activities and then with a very, very strong um, security perimeter around all the systems that we provide, whether that be uh, in a SaaS offering or whether we provide and manage them in the enterprise environment on our client's behalf. Uh, so these things are absolutely core to us. And again, it's part of that deep engineering competence and technology that we have uh, in the industry. What are your long term goals? Our long term goal is definitely around growing, uh, growing profitably but also becoming more significantly known as a player in the industry. Behind the scenes, we're having a huge impact on um, a wide um, range of clients that we have, uh, absolutely massive impact on them in terms of the, the reliance they place on us, but also the, 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 the guidance and the sophistication we can bring to them. You know, most of our projects entail uh, a front up kind of business feasibility and business kind of planning stage that really kind of makes sure that the customer is going the right direction from, from day one in it. So really what we're looking to do a little bit in terms of um, um, our ambition level is, is to take that you know, light from, take our light from under a bushel, kind of become more rather than just a, one of the best kept secrets, is become more known for that, um, for known for what we're delivering uh, to to parties at the present time, uh, and then as a result of that, helping more of those um, customers to actually deliver and innovate around their systems and transform their their offerings in line with uh, the demands that are coming from the marketplace. How does your SaaS product work? For startup and emerging stockbrokers um, and prop traders and all sorts of uh, early emergent uh, financial institutions and people who've a, who have a need to provide a trading solution onto their client base, um, they can be up and running really quickly on our SaaS platform. It's a hosted environment. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's running. It's easy to scale within as well. So you can start out small, scale through different packages into uh, higher usage, higher trading volumes and higher customer uh, volumes through it as well. So what that 
that does for you know a, a startup enterprise who who has the risk uh, associated with trying to get the business to run the first place it reduces their need to invest time and money at that early stage of their business uh, as those grow uh, they may well decide at some stage then to start bringing more uh, to, to bring more of an enterprise uh, solution and we can bring uh, at that stage we can start migrating them into into our other trading platforms the kind of platforms that we're supplying already to the established institutional investors um, and again the key thing there is that and I suppose one of the messages to go back with on this is that um, you know in many cases we can uh, clients can approach us and we'll give them a viewpoint as to what the solution might entail and, and the cost that that would um, what their investment is going to look like in that right and um, and then they kind of drift off, maybe and try something else ex elsewhere, but typically end up coming back to us again, because in many cases, the, 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 the client can uh, anticipate that it's going to be a more straightforward thing than it actually is to build these platforms. The, the reason they come back to us is because deliveries elsewhere are failing or their costs are gone uh, through the roof as such, right? And again, going back to that in in integrity and trust-based relationship, we'll be straight up with the clients from day one as to what their need is going to actually uh, entail. That broad range of offering gives um, you know, that opportunity for a new startup um, enterprise to get going. It also gives the established player that transformative potential that they can, uh, um, you know, have confidence in rolling out um, new projects into new areas as such. So again, it's building that trust, that integrity, that accurate costing, being upfront about timescales. They're all critical parts of how we, how we do business and parts of that broad product range that we can bring to our customer base.